soon as we start having people log in, I'll tell you if we have zero, but it'll be just a few matter of seconds before people start. Okay, uh, well, let's just go ahead and I'll tell you when we have people on board. Do you want me to have someone come in and hold your phone? Uh, I can actually turn the camera towards okay. us if you okay. uh, okay. want it. Okay, so we have someone join us now. All right, I'm going to have you lay down. Okay, on so okay. are you going to lie down here? On your back, yes. Okay, okay. So we're going to do a knee aspiration and injection here in a minute, if you'll bear with us. Um, here we go. Okay. The left knee was injured during the walking up the stairs, so they're, they're actually going to they're actually going to remove the fluid in the knee. This is the left knee. And once they remove the fluid, then they will um, inject it with cortisone. Is that right? Cortisone, correct. Okay, so you're going to see this live for the first time on Periscope. You people are witnessing history in the making right now, so bear with us. Call your friends. Twitter everybody. Tell them to join in. They're going to be actually injecting. They're going to be first removing fluids, synovial fluid, we hope in the left knee and then they'll be injecting a cortisone which uh which what does the cortisone do the cortisone is an anti-inflammatory so it just helps to kind of halt this inflammatory process that's occurring i see Now, are you going to numb the knee or anything before so you? We use ethyl chloride. Oh, okay. Ethyl chloride is a topical anesthetic. Okay. So. So if you're squeamish with uh, any of this, you might want to just close your eyes. Anybody out there? So this is just uh, some betadine to clean the skin. Okay. Is the location critical? Where you it are is the easiest place to get into this pouch here in the top of the knee is from the lateral approach. Okay. So mark my spot and clean off the knee. So you're gonna make one, you're going to, you're only going to make one injection, one Yep, everything one goes through one focal area here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna uh, pull back once. And then you're going to get uh, the ethyl chloride coming up here. Okay. Well, that's interesting. You can shoot me across <laughs> the room with that stuff. Okay. With an injection or the uh, pinch coming up, dear. So you're actually removing the fluid now? Yeah. So the fluid should be clear and yellow. Oh, so very you can see what it looks like. Okay. And then Mary is going to use a clamp so I can switch uh, syringes here. I see. And you can see how it kind of drips. See how the consistency of it? Oh, yes. It's kind of like olive oil. Okay. This is the fluid that helps to lubricate the knee. Now, will this be, will this fluid be uh, analyzed? In the it will. Okay. And what are you looking for during the analysis? So this doesn't have the appearance of a knee that is infected, but you can see it's not perfectly clear. Um, so sometimes people can um, form crystals in their knee. Uh, most people are familiar with gout. Mm -hmm. um, there's also something called pseudo gout that can affect the knee. It's a different type of crystal. Okay. It's a calcium pyrophosphate crystal. I see. Um, so the analysis would basically tell us if there are any crystals in the knee. We got to get another syringe. Mm -hmm. I need to make a lot better. Yeah. I see. So the amount of fluid you're removing is 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 directly is a function of the of the inflammation in the knee, I guess. Right. So. Does it seem, does it tend to wander in that area? Is that why you're is that what you're correct? Doing? It goes. It has a tendency to accumulate in this pouch in the top of the knee called the suprapatellar pouch. Okay. And like we discussed earlier, it can also accumulate in the back of the knee in the form of a Baker's cyst. I see. Or I popliteal see. Oh, cyst. I see. I see. But like you said, that cyst actually in the back of the knee has um, shrunk. Um, we normally don't aspirate those Baker's cysts anyway. Uh, you know, it's a symptom oh, of inflammation. Interesting. I think we just hit the bottom of the barrel there. Oh, wow, okay. really? So there is a bottom of the barrel. Right? Yeah, I'm just going to kind of melt a little bit here. Huh. But you can already see your knee looks a lot yeah, it's smaller. Yeah, it's gone. It's normal. Yep. It's literally down to normal size. So, as compared to the other knee, which looks exactly the same. So now they're just basically, she's removing so, what looks like to be the very last part of it. 
And this is the cortisone oh, this here. This is the cortisone going in. So she's putting, took the fluid out, replacing it with cortisone. That's it. And that's pretty much it, folks. That's the procedure. Wow. I didn't feel, literally did not feel a thing. <laughs> Excellent. Completely, absolutely nothing. No pain. And I'll probably be walking out without my crutches, which is nice. You might want to take a picture of all these syringes over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. That. Can you see that? You can see what we did. This was how much was removed. This is amazing. So that, that blood, that red is not blood. No, that's not that's iodine. Yeah, so they actually removed. This is what was removed, wow, from my knee. That's just the fluid that was yeah. in my left knee. So each of those are 20 wow. cc, so 20, 40, 60, 80, and then a little over 10, so about 90 c, over 90 cc of and fluid. Someone asked, does the cortisone have any anesthetic? That was a question. Yes, it's mixed with um, Marcane, which is the local anesthetic we use here. Oh, okay. okay. Looking good, says nurse from Denmark. All right, All right. excellent. <laughs> and feeling good, most importantly, right? Fantastic. Yes. All right. So you want to send All right. this out? Yeah. All right, then. Thank you very much. And so I, I'm done here with nothing but a uh, band aid on my knee. And we're going to put a compression wrap oh, okay. on. Okay. Right. That just helps to discourage any fluid from wanting to uh, reaccumulate. We're going to just rest your foot there. All right. Well, this is a quick and painless little procedure. This is awesome. I love this periscope. It's pretty cool. Probably one of the first procedures like that. All right. Now this is um, we can. I think we can archive this. In fact, if you'd like a copy of it, I'll send you one. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. If I can, that'd be pretty cool. All right. All right. Let's get you on up. Yeah. Looks pretty good. How's it feel? Feels great. Excellent. So uh, let me uh, let's see. Here we are. All right. So here's my my savior, <laughs> savior number two. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed my knee. This is my good old knee, and uh, we'll hopefully not not be back here anytime soon. Not the personal, right? Does the wrap help the cortisone from dissipation? Was one of the questions. Uh, the wrap will just give the knee a little bit of counter pressure, so it's not so much with the cortisone. It's just to help discourage that fluid from wanting to re. re do I have to keep put? Do I have to put this on? I would leave that. I mean, you can take it off tonight to shower. Yeah. Um, like but I would wear it over the next forty-eight hours, oh, and you okay. can ice directly on top of that. So you can ice for about twenty minutes at a time. Okay. Oh, uh, I see. Maybe really? every hour or two. Right. So this one, I like the Velcro ones instead of the ones with the clasps yeah me too um you know they're a little bit easier to use and i can give you an extra one to take